morning, guys. I wanted to tell you a story. I went to film school here in Reykjavik, and right after I graduated from that film school, I started working in a digital ad agency called Kiwi. Kiwi focused mostly on like short social media content, and I was basically hired to manufacture that. <laughs> well, I made a lot of that. I ended up working there for about one and a half year. While I was working there, I got really good at working really fast. And I feel like that is a very valuable asset to have as an editor, especially now in 2023. And one of the biggest reasons that I was able to work so fast in Kiwi was the editing workflow that I was kind of developing while I was working there. And that's exactly what I want to talk about in today's video. So I want to show you guys some tips that really helped me becoming a faster and just a better overall editor. Coffee's ready. I edit on Premiere Pro, uh, but the things I'm going to talk about should make sense whether you edit on Final Cut or uh, Resolve or, or Premiere, whatever. It's good, it's good. Good cuppa. Okay, let's get into it. Editing setups. I kind of enjoy editing in random places. I love it. In an airport, in a car, in a random coffee house, in a mountain village in Thailand, which I actually got to do um, last year in November, and it was it was awesome. Of course, it's nice to have two monitors, and it's nice to have a gaming mouse, and a nice desk, and a nice chair, and all that, but the things I'm going to talk about in this video don't require you to have any of this stuff. You just have to have a laptop, pretty much, and maybe headphones. Next thing, organization. The most important thing is just that you are not a mess. <laughs> that your whole project is not just pure chaos. Because I've seen some projects and I, I know a lot of great editors, but uh, they're very messy editors. And the only thing I wanna say is just use folders. <laughs> Seriously. Whether it's in your project or in your uh, finder or file explorer or whatever, just use folders. That's the only thing. Oh, and uh, command shift N on Mac and control shift N on PC creates a new folder. I, I see a lot of people like right clicking and pressing new folder. It's a tiny thing. It saves you maybe one second, but uh, it's those kinds of things that I wanna go into because those things add up. Keyboard shortcuts. If you're not using keyboard shortcuts, you probably should be if you're trying to take this seriously. And you can customize them however you want. One thing I would keep in mind is try to assign the commands to the keys that you use with your left hand. It's basically the same keys that you use when you're gaming. Like you don't wanna have the commands all over the keyboard. It's obviously different in every editing software, but in Premiere, you just click Premiere Pro and then you go to keyboard shortcuts, you search the command, and there you can kind of assign certain keys to that command. If the key is already assigned to another command, then the program will let you know. First shortcuts, Q and W. These two I use a lot. And what they do is ripple cut to the left of playhead and ripple cut to the right of the playhead. So instead of clicking the razor tool on the left side of the timeline, going to the clip, cutting the clip, picking the piece that you want out, deleting that piece, and then moving all the clips back together to close the gap, you basically just press Q or W. Q left, W right. Really handy. And like I said, you don't have to use Q and W, but definitely have these commands on some keys. I think actually Premiere has these commands on Q and W when you first open Premiere. Okay, so next shortcuts, X and S. X cuts the clip, S ripple deletes the clip. I would always assign a key to just cutting. You can, of course, have a certain key assigned to the razor tool, but then you have to click that and then click the clip. Like I said, every single thing that can make you faster, you should use it. The seconds add up, and especially the long term. X just cuts, simple. S deletes the clip, and Ripple deletes the space that the clip left behind. Instead of picking the clip, deleting it, and then deleting the space, or moving the footage together again to close the gap, you just press one key, boom, done. And these four shortcuts that I've now talked about, Q, W, X, and S, these are some of the shortcuts that I use most, especially when making selects, which is something I'm gonna talk more about later in the video. Next ones up are R and T. I use those to zoom in and out. For me, it's just a matter of being able to navigate the timeline in a comfortable way. If you would take those keyboard shortcuts out of my keyboard and watch me edit, I would look like 
I've never even opened this program before. I use these two so, so much. Okay, and now for the last two keyboard shortcuts that I'm gonna talk about, Y and E. Y unlinks clips instead of pushing the button that is in the top left corner of the timeline. If you wanna detach the audio from the video, it's just basic, it saves you time. E, it disables and enables clips. If you don't have a key assigned to this, you, you would have to right click and press disable and then right click again and press enable. I use it all the time. Those are the keyboard shortcuts that I use the most. The most crucial are probably the cutting shortcuts, you know, Q, W, S, X, because those just speed up your editing so, so much. I was shocked when I found out about this because I was the guy who was using the razor tool. I was like cutting this, maybe cut here, picking the clip, deleting it, dragging over all the other clips, moving them side by side. It was just like, it didn't make any sense, but I didn't really realize how little sense it made until I found out about these keyboard shortcuts, which is like, oh my God, I can do all these five steps in one key? <laughs> Blew my mind. Making selects. I make selects in 99% of everything I do. I know sometimes when you get home after a good shoot, all you wanna do is just dump that footage into your computer straight into Premiere and start editing it. But almost every single time it's worth it to take the time, put all the footage on a timeline and scrub through it and just chop it up a little bit. You're just going through all the footage and you're, you're basically deleting the stuff that is just trash. Maybe you pressed record without knowing, then obviously you're deleting that, but you're also just chopping off the ends of clips. And you can do this multiple times. So sometimes I will do this one time and then duplicate the sequence or the timeline, do it again, chop some more stuff off of the clips, duplicate it again. And then I have like the third sequence. It's just the absolute best footage. And what this does is it gives you a visual representation of all the footage you have. You go through all the footage so you know it very well, uh, which is always great after a shoot, especially if some time passes between the shoot and when you're going to edit it. Now, sometimes I'll push the clips that I really like up one layer with option arrow up. This gives you a very visual overview of the better clips in the selects timeline. And if you use the keyboard shortcuts, I promise you, you're gonna be so quick doing this. On the other hand, if you don't use them, it's gonna be annoying. It's gonna take ages to do this. It's the worst idea ever to make coffee and then, then go film a video. It always sounds good in my head, but then I've just talked to the camera for like 20 minutes and the coffee is just like almost cold. <sighs> Finally, I want to talk about focus. Focus is probably the most important thing you want to have when you're editing. You can kind of forget about the keyboard shortcuts if you don't have focus to edit. You have to respect the project that you're working on and you want to really give it all your attention. And if you're always distracted, going to do something else, well, first of all, it's gonna take ages for you to edit. And second, the edit is probably not gonna be very good because you were never really in the zone. That's exactly what I tried to get in as often as possible. Everyone has probably experienced it. It's kind of when all your energy just goes into one thing. It's freaking awesome getting in the zone. It's kind of hard to control, but you can't do some things that make it more likely that you get in the zone. So here are three things that I do to get in the zone as often as I possibly can. First thing that I do is put my phone on silent. I mean, it's a no brainer. If you're not already doing this, I highly recommend that you do because you don't want to let this device control when you take your eyes off the screen. So I would put it on do not disturb and face down or in another room. That's what that's what I do all the time because I have no self control and <laughs> I just yeah, I have to throw it somewhere else that I, I just literally don't see it. The second thing I do is edit before noon. I don't know if there's any science behind this or or why this works for me, but this is probably very different between every single individual. I try to do the work that requires the most creative effort and, and just the most energy before noon. So emails and, and stuff like that is afternoon. It's just more likely that I will get in the zone before noon. It's as simple as that. And the third thing is just use noise canceling headphones. It's a pretty simple advice, but I just freaking love those. I feel like we don't give noise canceling headphones enough credit. Like how amazing are these devices? I talked about that I love editing in random places like airports or uh, I don't know, coffee houses, often very noisy places. Even though I like, you know, kind of the chaos that is all around me, I, I still love to be able to just put in my headphones and boop, 
like turning off the environment. Am I the only one who's always that mind blown in airplanes when I turn this on? It's like literally I'm just turning the airplane off. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't want to do that, but it helps with editing. <laughs> this is kind of the things that I believe make me uh, as good of an editor as I am. There are definitely more things that you can do. And like I said, I am not a genius in any of this, but I, I have worked doing this for some time now. And I'm very happy with my um, workflow that I've kind of developed. And I 100% believe in this, that this will make you a faster and better editor. So if you haven't already, uh, check some of these things out and see for yourself if they help you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, I would really appreciate it if you give this video a like. And if you have something to say, drop a comment down below. Consider subscribing if you want to see more content from me. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. I ended a video I shot like two weeks ago with exactly this moment, like, oh, this coffee is not good. I wonder if it's still warm in the pot. It's a little better, a tiny bit better. Note to self, make coffee after shooting video next time. Yep, 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 yep. All right.